Hello, for this problem we have a frame. Uh, this is frame A, B, C over here. Uh, it's only got two members in it. So it's got A, B, which is going down here, and then C, B, which goes across. And we've got a six kilonewton load uh, about two thirds of the way out of our uh, on member CB. So we want to find all forces acting on each member of the truss shown below. Uh, so normally the first thing we would do is separate this from the wall and analyze it as a, uh, a rigid body. Uh, but we can't do this in this case, can't do that in this case because of uh, the body not being independently rigid. So if we imagine separating this whole thing from the wall, um, there's nothing keeping it from basically being just two members that could kind of swing independently of one another. So because of that, we can't just do uh, the equilibrium equations for the whole thing. We need to instead just break the whole thing apart uh, and we're going to analyze it um, in pieces. So to do that, we go ahead and we're going to <clears throat> uh, break it apart. And I've drawn a free body diagram of the two pieces right here. Uh, so we've got member AB and member CB right here. I've put the 6 kilonewton force already on member CB. Uh, now we need to identify all the unknown forces. So the first thing that's really going to help me a lot with this problem uh, is noticing that member AB uh, right here, member AB is a two force member. It's only got forces acting on point B and point A. So with that in mind, we know that this whole thing is either in tension or compression. So I'm going to assume that the whole thing is in tension. Uh, I'm going to have force FB down here, and we have force FA up here. Uh, and I know that these forces are acting along this line connecting the two members. Uh, and that helps me remember uh, CB as well, because I know that force FB, I've got an equal and opposite force right here that's acting on member CB. Uh, so this angle right here, taken from the original problem, this is a 60 degree angle right there. Alright, so even though it's anchored by a pin joint at the top, we only have one force we really need to worry about, because I know this is a two force member. Uh, and member at joint C, however, um, member CB is not a two force member, so where it's anchored to the wall, I've got a potential for forces in both the X and the Y. So I'm going to call this one FCX and this one FCY. Alright, so now that I have my uh, free body diagram together for this problem, the next thing I need to do is to draw out the um, equilibrium equations. Uh, I'm going to start with, remember CB at the bottom here, uh, and <clears throat> figure out my unknown forces. So for remember CB, I'm going to do sum of forces in the X, and sum of forces in the X are going to be FCX minus, uh, it's going to be cosine 60 of FB. And sum of forces in the X is equal to 0. For sum of forces in the Y, we're going to have FCY. Uh, minus 6 kilonewtons uh, plus sine 60 of FB. And that whole thing uh, is going to be equal to zero. Uh, and then finally I'm going to have my moments. Uh, so I'm going to take the moment about point C over here uh, and that lets me just kind of figure out um, the unknown force FB. So sum of moments about point C uh, is going to be equal to, I've got the 6 kilonewton force, that's so going to be a negative moment, it would cause a clockwise rotation. So 6 kilonewtons times 2 meters and again that's negative. Uh, and I've got a positive moment from FB over here. Uh, and so the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to think about breaking this down into components. So the vertical component would exert a moment, uh, but the horizontal component of FB doesn't exert a moment. 
Uh, so the distance here would be 3 meters. And the force, the vertical component of the force, again, is just equal to the sine 60 of FB. And this is going to cause a counterclockwise rotation. Using my right hand rule, I know that that is a positive moment. So that is equal to zero. All right, so easiest one to start with is going to be uh, my moment equation. I've only got one unknown there. So FB is going to be equal to um, 2 times 6 divided by 3 times the sine of 60. And that will give me a number uh, of 4.6 kilonewtons for FB. All right, so if I go back and now I'm going to look at some of the forces in the x direction, uh, I'm going to get FCX is going to be equal to um, <clears throat> cosine 60 of FB. So cosine 60 times this value 4.6 uh, is going to be equal to 2.3 kilonewtons. And all of these are positive numbers, again indicating that uh, I'm guessing the right directions for all of these. So FCX actually does go to the right. FB does actually kind of pull up this direction on, F on member CB, uh, etc. Uh, FCY, do that, is going to be equal to 6 minus sine 60 of 4.6. And that's going to give me a number equal to 2 kilonewtons. All right, so let's go back, and I'm going to draw some of these in uh, to my original diagram over here. So I know that FCX, that was equal to 2.3 kilonewtons. I know FCY, that was equal to 2 kilonewtons. Uh, and FB was 4.6 kilonewtons. And I've also got FB acting over here. And so the last part of solving this problem, the only thing I don't know is this uh, FA up at the top. Um, if I look at <clears throat> uh, sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y, uh, I really could just kind of rearrange this and define my axes differently. So x and y, like so. Uh, and for member a, b, sum of forces in the x is going to be equal to um, 4.6 minus fa is equal to 0. And I get fa is equal to 4.6. Kilonewtons, which is kind of obvious with the two-force member. I'm going to have an equal and opposite force on the other end of my two-force member. So with that, I've got my two members. Uh, I've solved for all the forces acting on each of those two members, uh, and we've kind of solved our problem. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.